Eight generations of Corvette to choose from, a number of different power levels and performance capabilities, and not to mention a pricing point that goes from not so bad to you gotta be shitting me. Picking the best bang for your buck Corvette on the market is a pretty tall task, but I think I got it narrowed down, and I'm gonna walk you through how I got there. Fortunately, I think we can knock two, maybe three generations of Corvette off this list immediately, starting with, unfortunately for some of you, the C8. I think the C8 Corvette has got to go off of this list because number one, any car over $100,000 really shouldn't be included on a bang for your buck list. But I would also say that people buying a car for $100,000 or more are not necessarily buying it for the value. They're buying it for and maybe investment purposes, mostly for prestige and class and exclusivity. They're not looking at it necessarily for the, the performance that they're getting for that dollar amount. Sure, when you compare it to other cars in its similar class, like Ferraris, Lamborghinis, Porsches, things like that, it really can hold its own in a lot of ways for a much better price point. But when you compare it to other Corvettes that are available, it just doesn't really it doesn't really give you that bang for the buck vibe. I would say the second generation Corvette to take off of this list is the second generation Corvette, the C2 as it were. Now, yes, obviously it's a beautiful car, sounded fantastic. It was quite a performer for its time, but when you're talking about bang for the buck, I don't think you're getting a lot out of that car. Sure, don't get me wrong, a great collector's item, a great car to pass along uh, through the generations to hand down to your child or grandchild. Uh, but if you're talking about what you're getting for that car other than being able to take it to car shows and show it off and grab a lot of attention, you're just not getting much for it these days. Unless, uh, of course, you love collector's items, it, you consider it an investment, uh, you just love looking at it, and that is where the value comes to you, and I would say this about the C8 as well, uh, then sh sure. But when you're comparing it to other Corvettes that are available these days and you're looking for what am I getting for my money, I gotta take the C2 off the list. I think we can continue down this thought path, uh, if you will, with the C1 Corvette. Now, obviously, this is the generation of Corvette, the first Corvette to establish the lineage, to establish the legacy of you know, American sports car. And for that reason, it's a fantastic collector. It's beautiful to look at. It really truly does get you into that exclusive club. How many first generation Corvettes are there right now? in existence that are in good shape, drivable, something that you can enjoy? Probably not very many. Obviously, I don't know. If you happen to know those numbers, leave them in the comments below. I'm curious to see. Uh, but again, comparing them to other Corvettes, what are you going to get out of it? Sure, you got a trailer queen, you got a car that you can take to car shows, you're going to grab a lot of attention from it, and you know it's something that you can uh, hold on to forever and pass down uh, through the generations if you'd like. But to me, personally, when I'm buying a car, I want a car that I can drive, that I can beat on, that I can also take to car shows, that I can head to tail of the dragon, or I can take it to the drag strip and just enjoy it thoroughly and also enjoy looking at it. And I think there are other generations of Corvette still on this list that um, you can get that from with a fraction of the money. And that's what bang for the buck is, right? So here we are, the fourth generation Corvette. Which one do we eliminate next? This one is a little bit painful for me. And it happens to be the C4. The fourth generation Corvette to be eliminated off this list is the fourth generation Corvette. And I say this is painful because as a kid of the 90s, I saw a lot of these around. A family friend had one. When he pulled up to the house, I always thought it was so cool to look at. It was a far cry from the previous three generations of Corvette. It just was a a completely new body style. Uh, they looked awesome. They really truly looked sporty. They kind of looked futuristic at the time. Really kind of sleek, a little bit boxy. They sat so low to the ground. I, I thought the seats in these C4 Corvettes were super cool looking. But the reality is that they came out at a time when sports cars in America were just garbage. Uh, so looked cool, sounded cool, but performed just not great. And for that reason, comparing them to every other Corvette generation, uh, you just got to look at it and say, bang for the buck wise, you're not really getting all that much out of the C4. Certainly you could probably find them for a really good deal, not probably under 10,000 bucks to be quite honest with you. And, and, and that's kind of cool. That's a fun car to grab for under 10K, uh, but the maintenance cost, getting them up to snuff in terms of reliability, uh, it takes quite a bit. Um, and you're just going to be left wanting more. Although one of the wildest Corvettes on the list, I gotta say the fifth generation Corvette to be eliminated is the C3, the third generation Corvette. Talk about far cry from previous generations. The C3 was completely different than 
than the previous two generations. It had now that super long front end with those very curvy, high arched fenders, uh, the short rear end, you know, uh, side exit exhaust in some of them, the Stingrays. I think, did they have T-tops? I can't remember if the C3 had T-tops or not, uh, but totally, totally different look of Corvette. And that makes them really kind of cool. But the C3 Corvette came to be at a really unique time. It, it came about at a time where there were still, still some really cool sports cars and muscle cars available in the market. And it lasted through the time period where sports cars in America were just complete garbage, right? When they started bringing out all these emission controls things uh, in the late 70s, they had the gas shortage. So they were really hindering performance on a lot of these muscle cars and sports cars. You saw the Mustang totally looked like crap in the 70s. Uh, the Chevy Nova turned into a grandma's car. Uh, the Chevelle, the same thing. A lot of these cars started to disappear. Um, and if they stuck around, they were completely redesigned and just became something, the Charger for crying out loud. Uh, they just became something that they really should never have been. And although the Corvette kind of held on to these very unique, styling, sporty looking things, uh, performance wise, it was just not good at all. So when you're talking about bang for the buck in 2024, I would steer away from the C3. Uh, again, maybe a collector's item, something unique that's going to grab a lot of attention these days. You don't really see a whole lot of them. Uh, at car shows and things of that nature, but you're really not getting much for your money in terms of performance and what you can do with the car. So C3 has got to go. At the start of this video, some of you maybe knew where we were going to go. Aside from maybe the C8, we are left with three generations of Corvette left. The C7, C6, and the C5. Now, if you've been following along, you know that I currently own a C5 Corvette. I recently owned a C6 Corvette, a Grand Sport, which I love. And I have driven a C7, a C7 automatic, which was a unique experience. That was actually the fastest I've ever gone in a car, 167 miles an hour. <sighs> Pretty darn fast. Corvette loved it, I gotta say. But this is the real challenge because these are very, these are three very, very good Corvettes. Man, this is a tough one between these three generations. Uh, but I gotta say, if you're talking bang for the buck, I'm gonna eliminate the C7. Some of you might kill me for that one and let me know in the comments what your analysis is of this situation. I'm curious to know, but for me personally, having owned two of these generations and driven the C7, um, bang for the buck wise, I'd get rid of the C7. It's certainly a great performance, certainly beautiful design. I do love the shift from the C6 to the C7, although I like, like the C7 Grand Sport or Z06 better than the C7 look. Uh, they were really cool and aggressive looking and the, the exhaust note is fantastic. The automatic transmission shifts so quick and so aggressively uh, and the sound between shifts is intoxicating. There's a lot to love about the C7. And you know, you could probably find some higher miles C7s on the market right now for low 30s, something like that. I, I remember comparing C6 Grand Sports to some higher mileage uh, C7s and the prices were uh, pretty comparable. But for what you get, in my opinion, I'd rather have a low mile C6 Grand Sport than a higher mile C7 for the same price. So I think the bang for the buck pushes me more toward the C6, if not the C5. And then there were two, and this is a tough one for a number of reasons, actually. Number one, as a child of the 90s and going to high school in the early 2000s, there were a lot of C5s around and that really was the car to have. And I own one currently, so I have a sort of a special affinity, a special place in my heart for the C5. And owning the C6, the LS3 Grand Sport, and knowing just what the capabilities are of that car, I lean toward that one. So deciding which one of the two is truly the best bang for the buck is a little bit tough. And I sort of had to get into the nitty gritty of this one uh, to really make my decision, but I think I got it. So looking at styling, just right off the rip, I love the look of the C5. I love the flip up headlights. It has sort of that classic Corvette look. Uh, I do like the C6, although the C6 Grand Sport is far better looking than the base model C6, in my opinion. The wider body panels, lower stance, 
uh, just sort of more of an aggressive look. I think Chevrolet made a mistake with the C6 and not keeping the flip up headlights. I don't like the exposed headlights with those weird bulbous clear lenses. I think that was not a good look for the C6. It's one of the things that disappoints me. Interior wise, I like the seats of the C6 a little bit better, a little more cushy, obviously a little newer at this point, but the bolstering was a little bit more substantial, held you in the seat a little bit better. Uh, a lot of people complain about the C6 in terms of how old or outdated the interior like the cluster and the center console looks but for me the austerity doesn't bother me at all in either of the generations of the corvette i think it's what a sports car should be i'm not a bells and whistles kind of guy so interior wise it, the nod sort of goes to the c6 a little bit more performance wise you really you have to give it to the c6 i mean there's a lot to be said about a 20 something year old car that's you know 300 350 wheel horsepower in the c5 uh, obviously, if you take a stock C5 and you put it on the dyno, it's going to dyno at, you know, 300 wheel horsepower or something like that. Whereas the C6, the LS3 in particular, uh, you put it on the dyno and it's going to make damn near 400 wheel horsepower. It's pretty impressive from a stock power plant. Let's talk about the real issue at hand here. What's what's the cost? Um, C5s can be had on the market for 15000 bucks for a really well appointed one. Uh, really good condition, relatively low miles. Some of them are tastefully modified. Some of them are... Uh, really well done. Usually modifications don't add value all that much uh, to a car, but if you're trying to pull a little bit of additional power out of it, some basic bolt-ons, a uh, good set of wheels and tires, which a lot of these C5s have at this point, uh, you're going to be in that 350, you know, almost touching 400 wheel horsepower point, and you can get that for 15 grand. Jeez, there's there's some six-speed manuals that are in good shape for eleven, twelve thousand dollars these days. So. There is a ton of value in, in really good shape C5s right now. Uh, and that's what really made this a, a difficult decision because I would say the C6 LS3 in the Grand Sport in particular is one of the best bang for your buck sports cars ever, in my opinion. Um, so this is the tough one coming down to these two. Uh, the C6, uh, uh, you know, almost 400 wheel horsepower right off the bat. Uh, they handle modifications really well. They respond to modifications really well. Uh, they're newer, obviously, so you know you th you think you're a little bit more safe um, as far as maintenance cost goes. Uh, they're going to need less to get them up to snuff, as it were. Uh, you know, before you can really start beating on it, they're probably already ready to go. Um, when we're talking about the Grand Sport, you have the wide body panels, you have the big brakes. Uh, if you're in the manual, you got the dry sump set up so it's ready for a track day immediately. <sighs> God, that LS3 screams. Uh, what's the answer? What are we getting at here? I would say the C6 Grand Sport wins the day again. The C6 Grand Sport is one of, if not the best sports cars ever produced in my humble opinion. And although a lot of people will compare it or say, hey, the C5 Z06 uh, is comparable, uh, maybe so, maybe so, but you can get a you know 2011, 2012 Grand Sport C6 with the LS3, big brakes, dry sump, um, you know, big tires, those that fat ass, uh, and it's such a good looking car that's going to grab a ton of attention. It's gonna perform, uh, you can beat the hell out of it and it's just gonna rip and rip and rip. And you can get those for 30,000 bucks, mid thirties these days. Um, higher miles, you might be able to get it for under 30 from a private party deal. There is a ton of value in that case. That is gotta be one of the best bang for your buck cars available right now. Uh, we can really dig into the details and get into the nitty gritty of this and really sort of flesh this conversation out, but sort of a surface level quick analysis, the C6 Grand Sport, very, very hard to beat. I mean, it is a ton of car for 30,000 uh, bucks. And, you know, it's just, I, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some people try to chime in and say the, you know, make an argument for the C5 Z06, of course, or, you know, try to make an argument for the C8, but, uh, you know, in my opinion and my personal experience, the C6 Grand Sport is really, really tough to beat when you're talking about the, the amount of car that you get for the dollar. And uh, 
yeah, let me know in the comments below what you think. I'm always curious to know what your input is or how your, your opinions differ from mine. Uh, it makes for some good conversation. So thank you guys very much for watching this video. I appreciate the continued support up to this point. A lot more coming for the channel. And if you're into Corvette stuff, I got a bunch of stuff posted on this channel. So check it out if you have a minute. Appreciate it again. Subscribe if you haven't already. See you in the next one.